Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana, and I'm sorry I'm late. I accidentally went live on my team page because that's where uh, the previous afternoon when I go live, that's the last place I went live was with my team. I do um, a team live with my um, team every Tuesday afternoon, and we go over questions and everything. And um, uh, so I had left it on that. It always stays on that. And I forgot to switch it over to the business page, which I'm on right now. So good morning, everyone. And I had this long discourse about what's going on in my life. So maybe we'll talk about that afterwards, um, but suffice it to say the last few days have been crazy. And, um, but the cool thing about that crazy, crazy life um, is that I still had time to stamp. And uh, one of the reasons I have time to stamp is because of Casing Tuesday, because it is a take a card out of the catalog challenge and give it a makeover. And so I didn't have to start from scratch. I didn't have to say, oh my gosh, I have to design the best, greatest card ever and get into my head and say, oh no, I'm not going to be able to do this. Um, we picked a card for today and I'm going to pop it up on the screen right here. This is the card for today. And um, it's a nice, easy, easy layout. And I looked at this, I actually looked at it last night and then I was like, oh my gosh, I can't even think about this right now. But I just kind of took a little glance. And this morning, about uh, an hour ago, I finished this card. I Not this card, I made a different one. And I figured out how I was gonna change this up and, and make it my own. So that is very cool. Um, and let me pop over and um, show you the sketch. I, I probably like really messed up everything this morning. I, I yeah, my brain is just like <laughs> going crazy. <laughs> okay, here's the sketch. And here are the dimensions that you can use. And we've broken them down for you so that you can kind of have an idea. And you can change these up a little bit. But um, what I did is I actually switched the circle to the other side the, or the greeting layer to the other side. So you can just change things up a little bit. But I'm sure you'll see in a moment my card looks a lot like the original in layout. So let me just close these up here. And how about we talk about my crazy life afterwards? Hello, everyone. I'm sorry I'm late. Um, I'm glad you're here. Um, let's pop over and let's have a look and see what my card is for today. Yes, I brought out trusty little Christmas Scotty. And I'm so glad I did because he is so easy to work with. And okay, I'm going to show you the inside because if I don't show you now, I will forget. But I just did a little Merry Christmas on the inside. So the outside is May your days be furry and bright. And then it's Merry Christmas. Um, this is a great card, like a great card for kids. And there's a lot of people that love dogs and cats. And so this is just a really easy card. And I will point out that I did not use the Scotty Punch on this one, but I did put it in the supply list because if you get the stamp set, you will probably also want to get the punch because you could do some cute things with that. Like you could make little Christmas Scotty ornaments and then it's really fast to just um, stamp and punch them out. But these are the two Scotties in that stamp set that don't have a, that don't match the punch. So this one right here matches the punch. Um, and then I use these two right here that don't. So, you know, it's all good. And um, I, when you stamp and you don't have the punch, you can make a, a lot more cards like quicker, you know, just by doing quick, quick stamping. So let me show you how I made this card. So starting off with a card base, this is a half sheet of eight and a half by 11. It's eight and a half by five and a half. And then I scored it in half at the four and a quarter inch mark. Stampin' Up card bases, the card fronts are 
four and a quarter by five and a half. That's our traditional size. They fit inside a medium envelope. So we usually take that half sheet and turn that into a card. It's a great size to work with. Then I've got some pieces of the Sweetest Christmas Designer Series paper. Actually, these are the two, two back and front patterns. Um, and they're just, um, it's got a lot of stripes and kind of neutral patterns. So you could easily switch up this card with the different papers. My brain just couldn't process all that this morning. So let me just tell you real quick what the sizes of these paper are. So this one's two and a quarter by four and a half and this one is three and a quarter by three and three quarters so we can go ahead and just go ahead and glue these right on there right away this is kind of the bones of the card and i'll put this layer down first and i'll put this about hmm, maybe three eighths half an inch half an inch from the bottom and from the left side and on the original card the layer was crooked go ahead and do that if you want i wasn't going to have a crooked day i needed to have a very straight easy basic day and i couldn't wrap my head around that so we're just going to stick this down here and like that okay so you see right here, we're gonna to have to do some die cutting. But first, um, I wanna stamp this greeting. I'm going to grab Garden Green. I'll grab my greeting. With this particular one, since it goes really close to those little dots on the die cut, um, you wanna stamp it first okay because it will give you a better image you could do it the other way around you might just have a little bit of distortion um, right where the little dots are okay so we're going to come in and we're going to do some die cutting i'm trying to think if i can use my mini boss or i might be able to use mini boss today i don't have any big die cuts hello little mini boss <laughs> For those of you who have a mini boss, um, they tell you to do use a different plate for the bottom plate. I use plate number three. It's a little um, thinner, I think, in depth, and therefore it allows the rolling through the machine is a lot easier. So if you have this machine and you've had trouble with the roll through, try switching to number three. I think you're going to be very happy. And for those of you who don't have the machine yet, um, this is such a great little portable machine to have. I'm very happy with it. And we're just going to pop um, that number three and number two clear plate. We'll do the easy one first. We're going to use the stylish shapes this is upside down stylish shapes dies i'm going to use the second largest circle it's got nice little stitches on the edge and i'll just pop that in place and we'll just roll this through okay so this is number one and then we're going to i like to work from left to right so this one and we're going to use this long skinny one and we're going to do a little trick because we're going to make this a little shorter so you're going to be covering up i'm going to use a little piece of post-it tape you're going to be covering up some of your words okay because um so what i'm doing on the top i'm going just above the vowels and it will cover up just the bottom of furry and bright, but I think this will work. And I'm putting it closer to my left hand side because I'm gonna cut off, oop. No, I think I'm still good. I shifted, but I don't think I shifted my die off my paper roll. We'll see in a moment. Okay, let's pop this off here. Let's let's hope it worked okay yeah so it did so you can see it's really close to the edge but 
not over. So now I'm going to feed this back in on the back side and I'm just going to make it just a little bit shorter. I'm just lining these dots back up on the back. I may as well pin this down again. Pin it down on that side. And then I'm going to run it through. It's just going to take a little bit off the end. Once I feel it go over the hump, I can kind of feel a little bit, I have to press a little harder to move it around. Then I can go back because it's already hit the end of the die. And I really don't need to go all the way through because I've already die cut everything else. And you can see it just took off that little bit of a piece. It makes it just a little bit smaller. It hugs the greeting just a little bit better. See, it's just a little bit shorter. Uh, you don't have to do that, but it's just something you can do with your other longer dies. Usually you can make them a little shorter to fit your greetings. Okay, I think I've die cut everything I need. Bring in my little circle. And by now you know my little trick with the Scotty. I like to use navy ink. My son says he can tell it's navy, but I can't. Um, and you know, things sometimes aren't black that we think are black. So <laughs> anyway, I like to use navy. It's a very dark ink color. When it's stamped down, it looks almost black. Why do I use that? Because these are our firm foam pads and they give a really nice stamped image. Better than I could get with the tuxedo. Okay, so see my little Scotty, he looks pretty darn black and dark. Okay, let's bring in, oh, no, I did it right. I'm, I was like thinking I, I stamped the this in the wrong color, but I've got it right. Okay, let's bring this back in. And now we're going to glue this. And I'm doing it probably about an eighth to a quarter of an inch on this side. Make sure your Scotty is level. Okay, he's level. And then for this, um, gonna do little dimensionals and I'll just put this across here like see how simple this card is it looks difficult because of the paper right like it looks like um, harder than it really is and so I've got these sequins these are called adhesive backed seasonal sequins so they'll look good with any of your traditional colored Christmas cards and I'll just take a few of them and just pop them around the Scotty I'm going to use a white one right over here because I'm just trying to be a little bit <clears throat> neutral so you've got a little bling going on there so that's the card front and you know what I did not cut a layer for the inside let me grab that All my cardstock is across the room, my bigger cardstock, so that's why I'm always running over there to get stuff. So I've cut this piece to three and three quarters by five inches. We're going to take the Scotty that's standing up and the Merry Christmas. I'm gonna switch colors to red on the inside because we've, otherwise it's just going to be green and the color of the Scotty in red will make it look a little bit more festive. I actually did try having this be red here, but because of all of this red right here, 
the green actually looked better to my eye. So it's always fun, you know, when I'm designing a card, I play with different colors. Something might look almost right and then I can just tweak it a bit and it can look better. So I'm gonna put Merry Christmas up here. The way I like to write my cards is if I'm writing something, I usually put the person's name up here and then I write a little something down here. So usually I try and keep my greeting up a little bit higher. When you buy a card from the store, they usually center it because it looks nicer to the eye, you know, because it's, you know, centered. But um, practicality, like I, it looks better once the card's written in to have it like slightly different. So that's why I'm moving that up. I'm going to grab that little Scotty that's standing up and come up in navy and just kind of twist him just a little bit. So it looks like he's kind of like pushing on the Merry Christmas like that. I think that's kind of cute, right? You know, it's kind of like yeah, touching the Christmas. I think that's really sweet. Okay, and then we can just take this. It's just a very simple way to finish off the inside into a cute little Christmas card. And there's still enough written room to write the name of the person up here and then you have room down here for your message. And that's all there is to this card. How sweet is that, right? is so so sweet okay I think you could do this with the other papers let me grab let me grab the sweetest Christmas so um, I use this paper there's another red with a red stripe that you can use. Candy canes are always sweet. Look, there's a green stripe. There's this candy cane paper with a red and pink stripe. The big candy canes, oh, have a stripe on the back. And I wonder, this green one has another stripe on the back. So you've got a lot of options with putting this paper together. And the colors in this are like real red, um, pool party, sweet sorbet, and garden green. So you can just like really kind of mix and match your colors there. It's a very nice Christmassy paper. All right, I am coming back over to you guys. Oh, it's so good to see all of you. Um, let me, before I forget, tell you about my host code for the month. It's October now. And if you spend $50 with me this month, you are going to get a package of the red and green adhesive back curls. So the reason I ask you to use the host code is because I use the rewards from that to purchase all the rewards for everyone. Um, but if your order is over $150, please don't use the host code so you can get your own rewards. But if it's under, um, I use the collective because you wouldn't get any rewards on that anyway. I collect all the rewards under one host code and then I use them to buy the gifts for everyone because it's nice to be rewarded. Um, and um, so that's that's what I do. So your order needs to be at least $50 and then please use the host code. Everyone who purchases from me will get a free with to free tutorial. Your order just needs to be above $15. So that's a pretty low amount. Most orders are at least that or more. Um, and so that is my reward for the month. Um, anyway, all the supplies I use today, including the Sweet Scotty Bundle, the Sweetest Christmas Paper, and the Stylish Shape Styles, you'll find a supply list down below in the description of this video. And you'll also be able to find them over on my blog. And as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to answer them. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start looking at the comments and see what you guys have to say today. Good morning, Marty and Dee and Ellie. So um, 
Marty D and Ellie are all on my team and I love that they come out and watch my um, videos and right now we have a great starter kit special too so I'll just mention that um, it's $99 but and normally you get $125 worth of product in that starter kit but now you get $155 um, for um, $99 so that means that say you were placing an order and you had to place uh, an almost $100 order anyway, why not get an extra $56 in free product and free shipping? And this is all in October. So if say you missed out on that free shipping special we had a little while ago, you know, this is like placing a $100 order and getting like a lot more product in it, plus you get your free shipping. So um, if you're interested in that, let me just pop up that is my blog, qbsquest.com, and um, just, I could have abbreviated this. You can probably just put in qbsquest.com. Let me just do that right now. Everyone knows the start of, I'm going to make this into a big Q. There we go. <laughs> oh. All right. I just abbreviated that nice little um, uh, URL. So it's qbsquest.com forward slash join. And you can find out a lot more information about the starter kit there. And I'm always happy to answer your questions. You can ask my team members, they, they know. Um, I have a live for my team every single week where I, uh, you know, answer their questions. And then they can also email me anytime. Um, I, I do like to answer people's questions because I always have questions myself. So um, I know that type of personality. So I like to get people's questions answered. So anyway, ask me about the starter kit. I'd love to answer your questions. All right. Good morning, Deborah. And Marty said the paper is beautiful. It is. I love that straight paper. Good morning, Pam. And thank you for sharing my uh, video, Pam. Um, good morning, Betty from Oregon. Ellie says, I think I bought that paper and I just have to find it. Ellie moved recently, so she's like, she's probably um, uh, thinking about uh, how how crazy that might be. Um, good morning. Um, oh, Marty. And Marty said she loves uh, her mini boss. I do too. I didn't love it at first. I spent almost, I think it was like, almost a year not loving it until someone told me about the sandwich change and it was like eye-opening for me. Um, Betty says she loves the tip um, stamping the Scotty in Navy. It's a really makes it life a lot easier. If you do want to use black though and um, you're having trouble getting a, a good image, I love tuxedo black ink but it does have a linen top rather than a foam top. So um, if you have a Stamparatus, that's what I would use because you can put your paper into the Stamparatus, stamp it, lift it. If it's not a good image, you put it back down and you get a better image. So that is what I would do in that case. Use your Stamparatus. Um, Marty said I should always date my cards that way people who save them will always know when you sent them yeah that's a good idea i know my mom um when she writes me a card will put in the year and it's really really helpful for that that's a, a good idea um betty also lo loves the inside of the card well thank you um it's you know that's the nice thing about stamping is being able to you know, do the envelope, do the inside, and to do it the way you want to, right? And Betty says she also puts the date on hers. That's a really good reminder. I forget that sometimes. Um, Dee says she loves the Christmas papers this year, but she really misses Christmas plaids. My kids always laugh at her because uh, you tell them plaid is your favorite color. I, You know, I do like a plaid. I like... Um, Oh, what is it called? What is this? Oh no, this is also a plaid. I also like uh, like a herringbone pattern. Um, and there's also another pattern I like. I can't remember the name of it right now, but I do gingham. I love all of those, those patterns together. 
<laughs> Dee says she really loves Scotty's. Um, good morning, Janine. Well, thank you everyone for joining me this morning. I accidentally went live on my team page before I came here because that's one of the things I do and that's what it defaults to and I'm my brain was crazy this morning. Um, my son and his girlfriend are camping in a yurt up, well, I guess it's glamping, um, but it's cold in Maine right now, so um, you wouldn't catch me in a yurt in Maine at this time of year. Um, but uh, they are having fun up there. We got them launched off um, Sunday night. They arrived, we had dinner, and then um, they, um, we, I helped them find all the things they needed. They, they flew in from Canada, so they couldn't bring all of their stuff from up there. So they came here and grabbed all of their stuff and um, took off. And my husband and I this week are, we are um, deciding whether or not to put in an offer on a house. And um, I have never had this much angst about doing it before. Um, this would be the third house that we've bought because we've moved um, a few times. And um, our first house was a, um, a build. Um, we had a builder up in Canada who built a house for us. It was like a whole area that was being built. And so there were a bunch of builders and um, we picked a builder and put in an offer and he built the house that we wanted. Um, and so that was kind of a really cool process. Um, but it was a much shorter process because it was kind of just under the builder and it was just, it was easy. Um, and then, then we moved down to Tennessee and we didn't build a home that time, but we, um, had a home that was like, we were the second owners. The house was only eight years old. So it was also pretty easy <laughs> and this house that we're thinking of putting an offer in on is was built in the 1930s so it's a little different and you know it's got um it's completely livable but it, it needs it needs some additions um there's one and a half baths and um which i mean it's it's fine it's fine, but I don't think we've ever lived in a place that had one and a half baths. Even our first apartment had two full bathrooms. So if you can just think about, you know, my age, I'm a little uh, older now, we're going back to uh, like getting something that is uh, less well set up than our first apartment. <laughs> So it's it's a really interesting, um, you know, where we're at. We, you know, we are empty nesters right now. Our son is off in college. So, I mean, it is doable. Closet sizes are small. Um, and, you know, so there would be need to be some updates made. And it's unclear whether we, you know, a lot of places in this area have restrictions in terms of how far you can build side to side, like if you wanna do a renovation like that. So it, we would need a special permit to do that. And it, it's, it's, not, it's not that simple because um, if we have to leave the house while they're doing um, that part of the addition, you know, we'll incur extra costs because we'll have to rent a place and Boston rentals are not cheap. <laughs> so it's crazy, absolutely crazy. And we're going to be deciding in just a few minutes um, what we're going to do. So we keep going back and forth. A lot of things to think about. So that is what is on my brain today. But I will also be here on um, Friday later this week with a 3D tutorial for you. Um, and so I hope you join me for that. And that will be over on my YouTube channel. Um, so anyway, you guys have a great week. Think of me and my brain exploding, trying to come to a good decision. And either way, I'm going to be calm with the decision that we made. It's just that initial point up until, you know, you decide to go for it or not that you feel that, you know, that angst, that trepidation. And, um, so I'll, I'll be good in that way. It's, just making a, a a good decision. That's that's uh, the crazy, crazy thing about that. 
Okay, um, I hope you have a great week and I uh, hope to see some of you on Friday. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.